came with his discernment, he said, you are your father the devil. And all he knows how to lie. And he's the father of it. So he doesn't know how to be in truth. So anytime we participate in worldly stuff, what we're doing is we're taking on the attributes of a lie. Because that's all he knows. He can't give you nothing but lie. Nothing but fake. But it's going to look like it's the truth. He gives you unrighteousness, but it's disguised like it's righteous. You even come up with your own philosophy to justify why you're doing it. You know, your whole God knows my heart now. Which I keep telling you, he does know your heart. That's been the challenge. You just don't know it. Uh, didn't say no names, right? The, uh, Matthew 24. 24. Just want us to... I want us to... Again, I know every a lot of messages aren't as accommodating, maybe in some places. And, and I'm not against an accommodating message. It's just... If there's, we're at places in our life where we deserve to get what God has for us. You know, we've been doing enough. So the only way you get that is the truth. The scripture says the truth frees you, right? So not the truth, like, I'm going to tell them the truth. I don't care what they think. That, you know, it's kind of hard for you to hear that because it has a little edge on it. That little jersey come out and be like, who do you think you're talking to? But if you just get the truth, which, you know, some of the things I say is the truth. I know it's, it's, it's going to um, prick you a little bit. But the reason why this is so wonderful because I said mothers have purpose in their womb. I might have said that earlier today, but I did say it sometime today. They have purpose in their womb. Look at the pain that they go through to allow that purpose to be birthed. If the purpose is birthed, do you think a mom is happy if the purpose just dies suddenly? Or, if the, per or, or if, if the child is supposed to be purpose, aborts purpose. She's like, why well, ain't you handled all this pain? If you're just not going to live the life that you purpose to do and be fulfilled, what am I going to do pain for? Do you know, you know, y'all, y'all, I carried you for now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, so, God is saying, you're purpose for something. Not just to exist, but to fulfill. He's saying, but it's, it, it may, you, okay, your mom went, through, your, your, your parents went through some pain, your mom went through some pain for you to be birthed, you're going to have to go through some pain to walk in purpose. You have to go through a travail. It may cost you something. You say, well, it was only 40 weeks or 9 months or whatever. Have you been consistently 9 months locked into the righteousness of God? Every day, every moment you get. Consistent. We, what, what, what do we have? It was 120 days? Was it 120 days? Okay, can't do that thing for 120 hours. Just a, I said, 120 days, back in the guy, see what happens. We ain't, we ain't had to evaluate. We ain't had to bring nobody up. Because it because it's so easy to take for granted Communion with God. Righteousness with God. The life that he afforded you. You think that freedom means you can just do anything? You purpose to fulfill something. Look at what you're doing now, project it seven years from now. And would you be happy at it? Oh, you said you won't be happy at it? So then what are you doing to make sure you don't end up doing the same thing seven years from now? Today. Not next week. Not Monday. You know, because you know everything starts Monday, right? <laughs> Y'all know that, right? It's just, as soon as Monday get here. Y'all just get through the weekend, you know. Be back on my regiment Monday. <laughs> get busy Monday. Because Monday is the first day of the week. So you're like, man, this has been a long weekend. So I'm Tuesday. I can get into a Tuesday. Then, you know, Tuesday go by. You know, you got Bible study Wednesday. You know, I got so much stuff to do. Like Bible study on Wednesday. Then next thing you know, it's Thursday. You know what? It's like Thursday. That's not even like really starting nothing. So I'm going to wait till Monday. <laughs> Years have gone by. Like, which Monday is it? Like, <laughs> is it some type of game? How about this now, today? How about when you leave here today? Something. Even if you go buy a journal, put on a purpose, and sit with God, 
for, for I wish it was just an hour, but, but for five minutes and say, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing right now? And just write down what he touched. Just write it down. Don't, don't start thinking about, that's, how can I, I can't do that, and I'm blinded. No, no, please. Keep your mind out of it. Just write down what he touched. And then walk away. Just, just write down, come back and look at it later. But, but guess you started. Then, then wake up the next day. Go back to the journal. God, what the heck am I supposed to be doing? You might not want to say what the heck, but God, what am I supposed to be doing? And then write that down. And then just, and then after a while, you'll go back and look at it and be like, oh. See, you, if you can do that for 21 days, it will become a habit. And if that becomes a habit, you'll find out you're touching your dream every day. And then now you'll, what you'll start to look at is you'll be driving and something related to what you've been writing, you start to see. You'll, you'll have a conversation. And something in that conversation is related to what you've been writing now. You'll run into somebody. Somebody that the person you run into is related to what you wrote down. Just like when you go and buy that Toyota, that white Toyota, and you're like, man, this is sweet. I ain't even seen a car like this. And after you purchase it, you see like 300 white Toyotas look just like yours. And like, how come everybody this week bought a white Toyota? No, they didn't buy it this week. You didn't have a sensitivity to it because you weren't locked in on a white Toyota. Lock it on purpose, it develops a sensitivity to it. And the goal is to touch your dream every day. Whether you have five minutes or five hours. And you'll find yourself creating a moment, and another moment, and another moment is what we call what? Momentum. How would that work? And then you don't have to keep selling out your dreams for other people's. Spending your whole day watching somebody else's dream on TV. I watch TV. I love movies. I watch movies. But I'll be looking at stuff. I was like, oh, this dude put this together pretty sweet. You know, I'm all in the video and stuff, so I know since you, 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 you have to do the video, you'd be looking at, like I'd be looking at TV shows. I was like, oh, they, they probably did that with motion. You know, I'd be looking at like, I didn't even know stuff like that before. I, I, was just, I used to be looking at like, how did they do that? You know, but I'd be looking, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's sweet how they put that together. I'll sit in a place and I'll look at the building and I was like, yeah, at the next church. Could be the floor. I already seen the floor. I already seen how the children's ministry will look. Why? Because I'm thinking purpose all the time. So I mean, when I go, I was like, oh, matter of fact, I've been in places I can send people to the place. It's like, okay, go to Columbus, Ohio, to this particular building. They have a, 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 a recreational facility. Look at their flooring and do that. <laughs> You know, go into the doctor's office, uh, CMC, where you go get your, your, your MRIs uh, and how they have this designer set up. Do that. Because I'm always thinking purpose. So when somebody mentions something about a book, I'm already thinking about it. I'm already working on it. See, touching that dream. Touching that dream every day. But, but see, but, but, but that dream is designed for the real you, not the lie. So you got to expose the lie to embrace the truth. So, but you, so you, can't hold, you can't keep the lie under protective custody and think you're going to get the truth. <laughs> because th that lie is feeding you. So when you show up, like, okay, uh, how you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here uh, for uh, the purpose position. Uh, so, you know, where do I start? You the guy I talked to on the phone? Yeah, 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 I'm the guy. I uh, was just here for purpose. He says, uh, yeah, but you can't be. You, you, don't, you don't look like, you don't qualify for nothing. You know, you, I, I don't think you understand. When you walk through the door, you walk through a purpose x-ray. So when you walk through the purpose x-ray, there was more to you than what we see. So I'm sorry, sir, we cannot give you the job. It's, it's just not designed for you. Man, talking to you on the phone, I would have thought that you was the one. Though. That's why I told you as soon as you come, you could just start. But you're not the person that I talked to on the phone. I don't know, something something else about you. She just can't put my finger on it. See, because you're walking around carrying around that fugitive. That lie, that counterfeit person. Expose that fool. 
But anyway, all right, let's, let's look at uh, 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. And, and it's, it's amazing how we carry around a secret life. Uh, and sometimes we don't know it. Again, we all have blind spots. And, and this, uh, you know, when you're born in sin and shape and iniquity, you're born into a world where you, you enter this earth realm clouded in the first place.